sorry. Battery ran out. Okay. My apologies. Sorry, am I talking too fast? No, not at all. No, no, it's great. Well, there used to, there used to be a lot more <coughs> journalism around these various scandals, certainly the 80s and the 90s. You, you, you saw a lot more investigative work on these kind of corporate malfeasance stories or drug pricing scandals and things like that. I think one thing that's changed now is a lot of people are insured. And when there's a lot, a lot of people are insured, there may be a problem in the price of the drug, but they may not experience it themselves. So if a drug goes from $13 to $750 a pill, or if a treatment costs $84,000 or $184,000, what the patient's really looking at is what, what their copayment is. And as long as they have insurance and the insurance covers it, they, they, they don't really complain too much. What they really want to know is, are they in or out of the system? It's pretty painful if you're out, but if you're in, they just feel like, okay, it's not my problem anymore. Collectively, it's everyone's problem. I mean, the reason why we pay so much for insurance uh, is because it's, it's just become, uh, prices have become out of control. Eventually, you begin to see sort of the predictable backlash, which is to say it's harder and harder to get certain products covered by insurance. The co-payments are higher. The, you can't experiment with cancer drugs on patients as easily because the insurance company won't allow you to try a drug that doesn't have a strong approval, even though you might benefit from it. If, if you think we have about a trillion dollars of a drug market, uh, less than 8% of that is reinvested by the private sector back into R&D for new drugs. Of that 8% that's reinvested, less than half of that is invested in products that have any kind of medical benefits that anybody cares about. There's a certain amount of money that's just disguised bribes to doctors uh, and, 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 and consulting fees on clinical trials that is really just about getting in favor with doctors that prescribe your products. All of that's good from a commercial point of view, but it doesn't really do anything for medical outcomes. One sort of interpretation is that the White House figures that we're Americans, we're the sellers of drugs. We have companies like Pfizer and Merck and Johnson & Johnson, so uh, we should push for high prices everywhere because we would benefit more than it would, it would hurt us. The pharmaceutical industry is not the whole U.S. economy. And uh, uh, yet, for the trade agreement, they're almost the, the whole enchilada. I mean, like, basically, the, the, the biggest demand the United States has in the trade agreement is to give Big Pharma what it wants. That's coming at the expense of things for auto workers and for other sectors of the economy. They're going to re you know, come and be disadvantaged by the trade agreement. If you look at the CEOs of companies, old school would be CEOs that knew something about the industry itself, that worked, in, worked in, you know, as an engineer, or as a, they were doctors or things like that. Uh, like uh, Roy Vagelis from, uh, is that how you say his name? Former CEO of Merck was one of these sort of old school guys. Now you see these people that come in. Um, Pfizer for a while, they had uh, a, a, a CEO that came out of business school, then they had a lawyer running the firm. Nervadas fired one of their guys and replaced him with a catch-up salesman. I mean, now the people running the firms are just, you know, they're basically expertises in marketing, sometimes finance. And uh, it's just, they're just, uh, they're just trying to, you know, they have assets, the assets are whatever products they have, which are whatever drugs they have, and they just figure out how to make as much money from them as possible. Pharmaceutical drugs should be generic drugs. So they should be generic drugs all the time. You'd have to replace taking away the monopoly system. You'd have to create a separate way to pay off innovation. And that's not that, di that difficult to do for drugs. You can have a fund that rewards innovation that looks at the same type of information that's used right now as a reality check on, on reimbursements for, for high, pr high prices. Just, just to make it more concrete, you can delink the way that you finance R&D from the price of the drug that the patient sees.